previously on Vullenvine. Husby sweater is dead. I'm over it. It's done. We're casting on plan B. So what do you do? You, you panic order some more yarn. A sweater quantity of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in their cast iron colorway. Hey guys, I'm Kristen, also known as Woolen Vine here on the interwebs, on my YouTube channel, on Ravelry, on Instagram, where I'm most active when it comes to social media. And I am also the hand dyer behind Woolen Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarn company. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. And if you're into that type of thing and you're new here, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, and yeah, if if you uh, subscribe below, click the little subscribe button right there, uh, you will be notified every time I publish an episode, which is every Friday. So hopefully that is something fun to cap off your week. So I have a lot of fun things to share with you this week, especially knitting, uh, and I actually have a fabric haul this week to share with you. Uh, I know it's been pretty much crickets on the, the sewing content for the past couple of weeks or months, so to speak. But um, yeah, I, I feel I feel my sewing mojo coming back. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. I never, I never even realized that my sewing mojo was gone. Um, I just felt like that I was doing a lot more knitting than sewing. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get the itch to sew some more. Um, so I'll be talking more about that in the, in the sewing segment. Um, and then I have a couple of announcements before uh, I get into what I've been making. The first announcement is that we are quickly coming up on the 300th episode, which I am super, super excited about. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, I am working on some really fun giveaway prizes for the 300th episode and uh, the 20k subscriber episode. Uh, and by the way, guys, we are quickly coming up on 21k subscribers on the YouTube channel, which Wait, how? How did that happen? Thank you. Thank you guys. You are amazing. Um, but anyway, I, I, I definitely want to have a giveaway for both of those um, milestones, so to speak. And just to give you a little peek at what I will be giving away, uh, I know I just mentioned sewing and I just ordered some fabric uh, from my favorite place on the interwebs, fabric.com. Not endorsed, just a fan. Uh, but I found some really fun fabrics to make project bags because if you guys follow the podcast, you know how much I love making me some project bags. But if you're not familiar with uh, the Gastleys, it's kind of, I think it's Alexander Henry is the, the designer, but, uh, or the, the fabric company that creates the, the Gastleys theme that uh, it's very, I wanna say like Edward Gorey-esque. It's totally my aesthetic. I love I love these little illustrations and everything, but um, they recently came out with a new print that I just, I had to get it. And I thought it would make a perfect um, project bag, but it has all things knitting and sewing and it's the Gastleys doing it. I mean, you guys, yeah. And the lining is going to be these really awesome notions and tools, sewing tools, knitting tools. That's the main fabric and the lining, but you guys, the bottom of the bag is gonna be this awesome shimmery um, chambray fabric. It reminds me of a mermaid. So if you can just imagine like this fabric together with that, that's what the project bags are gonna look like. So I'm excited to whip those up, uh, just in case you are wondering, because I always do get asked this quite a lot. Um, when I do make project bags for giveaways, uh, a lot of people wanna know if I'm going to be selling those in my online store. And the answer is no. Um, at some point I did offer handmade project bags. However, I'm just not set up to produce, <laughs> to mass produce as many project bags as I would like to offer in my shop. It's a lot of work. Um, hand dyeing is just my main uh, gig when it comes to <laughs> my online shop. So unfortunately, I will not be selling project bags anytime soon or in the foreseeable future. So just to get that out there, uh, whenever I do make project bags, generally they're gifts for friends or giveaways for the podcast. Um, so in case you are wondering, but I'm really excited to whip those up. Uh, but yes, um, 
another announcement that correlates with one of the giveaways. I'm not gonna be uploading a regular episode next week because here in the United States, it is it is going to be Thanksgiving, so I'm taking some time off. Uh, so I will not be having a shop update. I will not be uploading a regular episode. However, I will be having a, a Thanksgiving special Ask Me Anything episode. <laughs> so, so here's how the giveaway is gonna go down. Um, for next week's episode, if you have a question for me about the podcast, about, um, you know, Volan Vine Yarns, uh, about my life, my personal life within reason, uh, any anything at all, just leave a question in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them in the special episode next week. And I will also announce a winner by choosing a uh, one of the comments below at random and announcing the winner on the episode next week. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, leave a, leave a question in the comments below. Next week, I'll answer all of your questions as, as best as I can and <laughs> as many as I can and as best as I can. And I will announce a winner at random. So uh, there's that. And then I will be having a separate giveaway for the, um, for the 300th episode um, in coming weeks. So hope you guys are very excited for that. Uh, I think that covers main announcements. Uh, but yes, the other announcement that I have is that we are still doing the Forest Pig Mitten Knit Along that I am co-hosting with my awesome friend Nina from the This Old Knit Podcast. So um, I unfortunately don't have any progress to share with you for my projects, but uh, there is still a lot of action happening over in the Ravelry thread for the Forest Pig Cal. Um, and as I mentioned, Erica Mount, the wonderful designer of the pattern, has generously donated a few giveaway codes uh, for her Ravelry shop, which is good for one free download of her patterns that she uh, has published. So this week's winner, uh, the winner I chose at random using random.org, the winner is number 48, Rosie Stewie. So yay, congrats, Rosie Stewie. Uh, your mittens are absolutely beautiful and uh, please do get in touch with me via Ravelry. Just send me a PM letting me know uh, that you were the winner and I will Will send you your promo code and thank you so much again to Erica Mount uh, for the generous codes and uh, yeah double dipping highly encouraged uh, you still have until November 22nd to enter your FOs into that thread in which I will uh, choose um, a winner it, it is a very small knit along there aren't too many participants um, so I'm not gonna be doing like a huge giveaway prize but uh, the giveaway prize that I will be doing for that is I will just be dipping into that thread uh, choosing a, a random winner and then gifting you a pattern from your Ravelry wish list so um, you know I actually got this idea from Lara of the uh, from the Jinx Handmade podcast <laughs> she's doing something similar for her 200th episode so make sure that you have your Ravelry wish list loaded up with a couple of patterns that uh, uh, you know, you would like to be gifted. And, um, you know, if you are the winner, I will be gifting you one of those patterns. So hope you guys are excited for that. Uh, and yeah, so, okay. That was a lot of announcements to announce in the intro, but, uh, yeah, let's move along to what I've been making. But first, just a really quick word from my amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout, and enjoy! And thanks Skillshare! As I mentioned last week, I... I'm totally over uh, the first incarnation of the Rift pullover that uh, I was knitting for Dennis, uh, the man, the husbeast sweater. Um, this has gotten the shaft, so it is no more. It will be frogged. It will become probably something different. Um, as I mentioned, I was considering repurposing the yarn. This is Peace Fleece. The yarn was just too stiff and hurting, like literally hurting my hands uh, as I was knitting with it. And I believe that was because either a combination of the yarn itself and the gauge. Uh, it is a very tight gauge. Um, and it just, it was not working out for me. But thank you to everybody who gave me, tried giving me suggestions to make it work. It wasn't happening. Uh, but the good news is I, I invested in some other yarn, recast on the sweater for Dennis. And you guys, I could not be more 
over the moon, happy, stinking excited about <laughs> the way this is progressing. Um, I cast on over the weekend using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, the yarn that the pattern actually calls for because um, surprise, surprise, uh, the Ripped Pullover is a pattern by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. So it only makes sense that the pattern would be knit out of his yarn, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is uh, their worsted weight base. And it's 100% American Targi. I am loving every stitch of it. It's like, it's like a cloud. It's like a spongy, I know, I know spongy is not <laughs> the most appealing uh, adjective to when you're referring to yarn, but I mean, sp when I say spongy, I mean, it just, it feels so lofty and like spongy in a good way, if that makes sense. I did a tubular cast on and now I am just knitting the body around and around and it has this, you, you're probably not even gonna be able to see this, but it has like this, nice um, ribbing detail for for the side seams. So it's like a mock side seam, but it has like this uh, ribbed detail to it. Um, and I did get gauge using the suggested needle size. So <laughs> yay, uh, that is a plus. And yeah, as I mentioned, there's nothing much more to write home about this. I'm just, I'm enjoying the knit. Yeah, so that that is where we are with my Rift Pullover. Again, a really awesome pattern by Jared Flood. Uh, yeah, we, we, are, we are on Body Island. So I think this is going to be my uh, knitting that I take with me um, on Thanksgiving when we visit family. Uh, and yeah, I, I know I had delusions of grandeur that I was going to have this done by Thanksgiving. Totally not gonna happen. Thanksgiving's next week. It could, it could if this is all that I worked on, but that's not how I work. So, uh, but he will have a sweater for, for the winter uh, because yes, winter's coming um, and I still have plenty of time before the actual winter comes. So, uh, although winter feels like it's already here, I digress. Anyway, um, moving along, I have a new cast on. <laughs> Because how many sweaters do I actually have cast on at the moment? I have my, I have Dennis's Rift Pullover. I am looking over there at another project bag with my throwback cardigan in a project bag, which is almost done. I'm on Sleeve Island. Uh, so I just, it's a matter of me just applying myself and getting those sleeves done. I love that sweater. I want it done. However, distractions, distractions. Um, and I also have my Radiate Pullover by Hohi Locatelli, a really beautiful pattern that is definitely, I'm enjoying every moment of it. Um, it's a pretty mindless knit too. It's just around and around and around. However, last week I mentioned that um, I had kind of like a dye lot issue and I have been alternating scenes every other round. However, <laughs> I was using two, I believe I was alternating with two skeins from the same dye lot and then two skeins from a totally different dye lot, um, which created this interesting effect here. So yes. And I know I said last week that it's not going to bother me and I decided I was going to leave it in. It's bothering the hell out of me. I'm going to rip it out and start again from, yeah, it's just stocking it in the round, in the round, in the round. And thankfully it is DK weight. So it's not, it shouldn't take me very long, but it's going to drive me nuts. Uh, so I'm going to rip it out to the sleeve separation up here. And then I'm going to combine one skein from this dye lot and one skein from this dye lot and alternate every other row and then do the same with the, the remaining two skeins that are left over, if, if that makes sense. So, because I really, I love the colors in this, I, I want to have this done. I want to be able to wear it. Um, but I know if I just leave it the way it is, it's it's gonna drive me a little batty. So it is on a little bit of a time out, unfortunately, uh, but it is not getting ripped out, thankfully. Um, yeah, it's just my own personal brand of crazy. Uh, that is that is how I roll when it comes to projects, apparently. I think the main thing that I learned about myself as a knitter in 2018 is not so much what colors I gravitate towards or what I'm mo most likely to wear, but how, more so how I work as a knitter, if that makes sense. Um, because I know, you know, there are, there are monogamous knitters where they only work on one project or you have polygamous knitters, polygamy, polygamous, polymatic, I don't, whatever, whatever the word is. Um, there are knitters who like to work on many projects at the same time. And I happen to fall into the category of polygamous knitter. 
Is that the right word? I don't know. But anyway, I'll put I'll put any corrections in the down bar because me, words, Kristen, sometimes me and words just don't. But yeah, sometimes in the past I would admittedly get down on myself about losing interest on a project or losing steam and then feeling bad about frogging it or abandoning it, uh, you know, because if you cast something on, the, the, right, the right thing to do is to finish what you start. But lately I find that I'm becoming more okay with being that type of a knitter. That's just who I am. That is how I work. That's how I like to knit things. Casting on things brings me joy. Um, and if something isn't bringing me joy, what's the point of working on it? You know, knitting is supposed to be fun. Um, I know I mention this every single week on the episode, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm really learning to embrace that aspect of myself as a knitter. Um, and yeah, case in point, I, cast on this project recently and I know it's a beautiful project. It's the pattern. I want it. It's it, This is definitely a product knit, not a process knit. And this is the Tenderly Shawl, uh, which I'm totally blanking on the designer's name, but I'll pop it in the down bar. Um, I got maybe to chart two and I've totally lost steam on it. I just don't want to knit it anymore and I am completely okay with that. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you in the next project, I'm repurposing this yarn, which is my Weep colorway. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think, I, you know, if, if you are a monogamous knitter and you're all about finishing what you start, that is amazing. You do you. I love the fact that we all have our own way of doing things and, you know, it, it just that's what makes us unique. That's what makes us exciting and interesting as knitters. And, you know, we kind of, you know, learn from each other, I guess. <laughs> so I don't know if that is making any sense, but you know, just from watching, not to, not to throw Ellie Skander knits under the bus, but she totally inspired me to just embrace cast on itis or start embrace start itis. When you feel like casting something on, cast on recklessly. Just do it because it makes you happy. So that is how I'm rolling. Uh, <laughs> so I hope that made sense. I know that was just like a bunch of um, a conscious, a, a stream of consciousness that I threw at you. But um, yeah, I, I feel like I, I have grown as a knitter in 2018 and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, that let, let, let's let's move along to the the next project. Emily, uh, as I just mentioned, she has been wanting to cast on the Ingles sweater, a pattern uh, by Boylan, blah, 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 a pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knits. And Caitlin recently had a sale going on on her in her Ravelry store. I think it was about I think patterns were like twenty or thirty percent off. So I, I went to town, treated myself to a couple of her patterns because I'm a huge fan of her work and yeah, um, I did purchase yarn for the Guthrie sweater, but then I, I actually dyed yarn this past week and I saw a color combination that I really liked and immediately thought of the Ingle sweater and I cast it on. So uh, yeah, here here's where I am so far. Um, and this is pretty much knitting itself. Uh, I, I cast on the day before yesterday. So I cast on, I wanna say on Tuesday, took the morning off, cast on and so yeah this is my hand dyed yarn Volen Vine yarns on the dk on my d on my I can't, I can't talk today <laughs> it's on my smitten dk base uh which is merino nylon cashmere on dk weight yarn um in the weep colorway so this gray is weep and then also succulents which is this um kind of like minty like minty green i want to say um, minty gray green actually and it's I'm actually holding as the patterns are dressed so you can actually hold DK weight yarn together with um, mohair yarn uh, to create kind of like a fuzzy effect on the uh, the snow I want to say like snowflake motif is this this I believe it's like either a leaf or snowflake motif I haven't decided yet but um it's creating a really, really lovely effect. Uh, and I'm holding uh, the succulents, uh, Smitten DK together with succulents, um, Ghost Lace, which is my uh, mohair silk lace weight uh, base. So yeah, it's, oh, I love this so much. Um, and I, I did not do a gauge. I was very naughty. It was just like a very impulsive cast on. But again, I'm not worried about it because it's supposed to be a very oversized um, pullover. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm not worried about fit at all. In fact, I don't want it to be too billowy. So I'm knitting 
um, the same, I'm knitting the smallest size, so I won't, I won't mind if there's, uh, you know, if, if it turns out a little smaller than the, the finished garment size, um, says it's going to be. So anyway, uh, yeah, and I'm using US size 6 4 millimeter, uh, carbons, circulars, and yeah, because I, I have so many US size 6 4 millimeter needles, I think they're all just, <laughs> they're all on projects at the moment, so, um, yeah, I think this is gonna be my my holiday sweater because I don't know I love the colors and there's snowflakes on it and ah, anyway so getting very 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 excited, um, but anyway if you are wondering I did not knit this sweater this was a, an impulse purchase I was browsing H and M for basics and then saw this and I could I could not resist you guys it's leopard print, and I've been wearing the heck out of it it's so warm so fluffy so cozy um, yeah but at the same time how cool would it be if you know, there was yarn out there that you could knit a leopard print um, pullover. I know Wool and the Gang, they make leopard print socks. So like uh, you buy a ball of yarn and then um, you have to reach a certain gauge, but if you just knit from the ball, it just creates this leopard print uh, sock print. Uh, and I've been meaning to get my hands on a skein of it. So, uh, but yeah, it'd be cool if they came out with like a sweater's quantity to get that pattern in the round because I feel like this would be a lot of intarsia, which I know a lot of people aren't too big fans of, uh, too big, big of fans of. So, um, but anyway, again, digressing, going off on a lot of tangents this week. But uh, yeah, that is my angle sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knits. Uh, and yeah, I will, I will link as always to all of these patterns, everything that I mentioned in the description box below. Um, but yes, uh, that, that my friends, is all I have for what I've been making this week. Uh, although I do have an update for you uh, as far as my sparkling cider hat pattern that is coming out. Uh, that is my latest knitting pattern that I came out with um, and it is currently being test knit by some wonderful, wonderful test knitters. Um, and yeah, here, here's the hat. So you can see up close it has kind of like a, a pine tree, cable motif, really, really simple, really intuitive. Um, and then it's topped off with a bead. So just to give it like a little extra sparkle. And the yarn is my hand dyed yarn, again, uh, Volan Vine Yarns uh, with my Volca base and Ghost Lace held together, doubled uh, to create this really cool, fluffy um, tech like fabric. And yeah, the halo on this is insane and it is super warm. I'll try it on again, you guys, just so you can see. Um, and I did get a couple of questions about the pattern. Uh, first of all, it, it, I'm aiming to publish it on Black Friday, so that's next next Friday. Uh, and if you joined the Volan Vine Yarns Lost Reindeer Yarn Club, uh, you will be getting a code. I, I haven't decided if I'm gonna include it in one of the next shipments or um, via email. You'll figure out, I'll, I'll keep you in the loop uh, either way and let you know how I'm going to give you the promo code. Um, but you will be getting a, a promo code to download the pattern for free as a thank you for joining the club. And then I will also be offering a Black Friday discount, 20% off uh, to celebrate the publication of the hat. So there will be that. And then, um, yeah, the one note that I want to mention about this hat, um, knitting with mohair is not the easiest. So <laughs> I would recommend using uh, a needle with a relatively sharp point. I, when I first cast this on, I was using uh, needles with a kind of, you know, a rounded point. It wasn't, they weren't sharp, but as soon as I switched over to my Haya Haya Sharps, it just flew by like butter. So that would be my one recommendation uh, is to use a pointy needle when knitting this hat. Um, and the other thing is uh, if you are not, uh, used to knitting with beads or haven't knit with beads or afraid to knit with beads, you can completely omit to the beads. Uh, it's not necessary at all. You can also omit the mohair. You don't have to knit the hat with the mohair. It's totally optional, totally up to you. Um, and I also include a link in the pattern to a tutorial on how I knit with beads. Um, so hopefully that will help you out. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. I think that is all I wanted to say about that. So a uh, big thank you again to my wonderful test knitters. Uh, they've been just so incredibly helpful um, as far as sharing notes and ideas and thoughts. Uh, and I don't know what I would do without them. You're amazing. Uh, and yes, the pattern again will be published next Friday um, on Black Friday. And I hope you guys are excited 
for that as I am. So yay, new new pattern. Um, yeah. Oh, and I also I got some I got some faux pom poms to go on top, and I think I think this might have to happen. Yeah. How cool is that? Anyway, um, I'm going to be knitting another one and I, I think in my weep colorway because Emily, uh, again, Slow Fashion Rebel, she's knitting hers uh, in weep. And then so is uh, Ine, who is uh, Nina of the This Old Knit podcast that she's test knitting hers uh, using weep as well. So, and I just love the way it looks with it as a solid, shaded solid. So I might have to follow suit. Yeah, so anyway. Um, yay, new hat pattern. Uh, moving along, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I have a fabric haul to share with you. In addition to purchasing the fabric for the giveaway prizes, I could not help uh, purchasing some more fabric to make garments for myself, as you do. Um, and I noticed because it was Halloween, they got some more fabric in stock that I am a huge fan of. And my sewing friend Amy actually made a Gertie, or it, it's not, it was a vintage pattern, but very similar to uh, the Gertie dress that I make a lot. <laughs> it's the uh, princess um, seam bodice with the gathered skirt. I have like three or four, four versions of those. Um, and she made a similar dress uh, using this fabric. And I was like, I kind of want to copy you now, but it's the bat fabric. Yeah, it's got bats, it's got flowers, it's got spider webs, and it's mauve. <laughs> it's mauve. So I think... I think another Gertie dress has to happen with this. And it is it is quilting cotton, but you know, I, I recently made a um a version of that dress using quilting cotton and it turned out fine. So um yeah, this this fabric is just amazing. So um I actually have a uh, lady skate I have two lady skater dresses out of this fabric. However, the jersey fabric, ver the, the jersey version of this print. Um and one of them, the the mauve version didn't turn out as well as I would have liked it to. So it's a little wonky. I have to do a couple of alterate alterations on there. And then I have a teal version, a second incarnation of that dress with this print, uh, which I really like and get a lot of wear out of. So, um, but yeah, unfortunately they didn't, they didn't have any of the Jersey fabric in stock. So went with the cotton. Um, the other thing that I got, this one I'm kind of on the fence about because yeah, it's more purple than mauve. It looked a little bit more pink pinkish on the website, but this is not double gauze, but triple gauze. Uh, yeah, so I was intrigued and the color looked a little bit more pinkish on the website, but it turned out to be a little bit more grapey, grapey grape mauve, if that makes sense. But I think, I think it flatters my complexion. It's more of like a dusty, dusty purple mauve. Um, but yeah, I was thinking maybe another Anna dress by By Hand London. This would be really lovely out of it. Just like a solid, plain, simple dress uh, that I can chuck on with maybe some pockets. I don't know. I was not expecting this to be as thick as it was. That See, that's the problem with purchasing fabric online. Again, I'm super lazy. I rarely leave the house. I'm such a homebody, which is ridiculous, but um, I just, I prefer to shop for fabric online. Um, unless, you know, I happen to be a Brooklyn General, which is my favorite LYS, and they have a really, really lovely fabric selection. But I guess, you know, I find myself falling down the rabbit hole and going on fabric.com and other websites searching for fabric. And, you know, it's kind of, it's very hit or miss. Uh, the good thing is that they have a really good uh, return policy if it doesn't work out. So there's that. And I think this will work out. Um, it's a lot, it's, it's a thicker jersey, but yeah. I have no idea what it's going to become, but if, you can see on the opposite side, it has like a very textured, very textured um, backing to it. So, and then it's kind of like, um, almost like a brushed jersey fabric on the, on the front side. So um, it doesn't have much stretch to it. Uh, so I don't know, I really don't know what it might become. Um, I don't know, I could see it becoming like either a cardigan also. It definitely has a little bit of weight to it. I might, I could make a hoodie out of it. That would be really fun. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. TBD. TBD. But yeah, that is my fabric haul. Uh, and I can't wait to dip into that fabric and get into sewing. Um, I'm actually taking off most of next week. As I mentioned, it's going to be Thanksgiving here in the United States. So I am not going to get much work done. Uh, Dennis and I are going up to visit uh, his brother and his family for the holiday. So I'm pretty much just going to get all the shipping done on Monday and Tuesday, uh, finish dyeing up some yarn clubs, and then I'm just taking the rest of the week off. 
off um, and enjoying some downtime uh, and hopefully, hopefully get some making done. Lots of making planned. Um, so cannot wait for that. Speaking of shop update, uh, just a quick heads up. If you are interested in my shop update, I am having one this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and if you would like to be notified about what colorways, what yarns, what bases, and all other news, uh, you can do so by signing up for my newsletter. I'll link to it in the description box below and you'll get an email. I usually send one out every Friday, uh, letting you know all those details. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, and just one more, one more point. Uh, I will not be having a shop update, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. So next, the weekend after this weekend, there will be no shop update. As I mentioned, I'm taking some time off. So um, definitely hop on to this weekend's update if you would like to, uh, you know, take advantage of that. So anyway, did that make any sense? I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> moving along, uh, I'm going to move along to the blather segment of the podcast where I chat about what's been happening in my life. Should you care to stick around? Um, so yeah, as far as what I've been watching, listening to, uh, I, as I mentioned, I finished watching Poldark season four um, and just realized that Outlander season, I think it's season four or five is out. I think it's season five. Is it season five? It's crazy. I think it's season four. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, but yeah, the the new series of Outlander is out, which I find I the one thing that I find really weird is that there was not much promotion around it. There wasn't much excitement about this season's Outlander. I think it's because they're in America now, and like the whole, I don't know. I feel like as soon as they move to America they moved the whole storyline to America. I just kind of lost interest a little bit. It wasn't as exciting as Scotland or France or, you know, what have you, because uh, within the series, if you're not familiar, they travel all all over. So, um, but yeah, at this point in the story, they're, they're in America now, and uh, the new world. And I haven't wa started watching it yet, but I that is going to be, I think, my viewing for uh, when I take some time off next week. So cannot wait to dip into that. Um, but yeah, the other thing that I have been watching is a, a new series that I started watching with Dennis. We've we've been suckered into watching the series on Amazon called Homecoming. And I actually heard about Homecoming through listening to the Happier podcast with Gretchen Rubin um, and her sister. I'm totally blanking on her name. It's a really awesome podcast, uh, you know, just about tips on how to make life just a little bit happier. And, you know, not that, not that I'm sad or anything, but you know, they just, they have a lot of, you know, life hacks and all that good stuff. So, uh, but I, heard about Homecoming through that podcast and it turns out Homecoming started out as a podcast, uh, just kind of like one of these fictional storylines uh, with Katherine Keener and David Schwimmer. And I started listening to the first two episodes. I never fin finished watching it, but um, I found out that they made a series about it on Amazon um, with Julia Roberts. And we have just been binge watching that every night. It is it is actually really good. Um, and if I had to describe it, it's kind of like Black Mirror, but let's see how well I can describe this series in a nutshell. It is, uh, Julia Roberts is a social worker and she counsels um, veterans coming back from war and just kind of like helping them uh, acclimate them back into civilian life. So, you know, it's this center, this um, rehabilit rehabilitation center that um, takes in uh, army veterans and, that are having har a hard time readjusting back to everyday life. And it's a program that's supposed to help them overcome any, you know, trauma or um, mental issues, etc. And Julia Roberts is a social worker working there. And just a whole bunch of, you know, crazy things unfold, um, working with one of her patients and then the person actually running the facility is a little crazy. So, so yeah, just a lot of crazy things happening. Um, very, very subtle, but you know, it, it, every episode leaves you wanting to find out more. Um, what else have I been listening to? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Kingdom of Ash. Um, the final book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. Almost done with it. I think I have like an hour and a half left, but you guys, I have no idea what mo what more can happen. I, It just keeps going and going and going. The storyline, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say I'm in love with it. I mean, it's, I, I'm, the one gripe that I have about the series and you know, I hope I'm not giving away any spoilers, but um, 
I'm not going to be giving away any spoilers, but uh, one of the tropes, that, like I, I love a good romance storyline. However, I just feel like with this series, everyone is getting matched up and everyone is, you know, because there are so many characters and they're all getting matched up together, it's just a little, I don't know, a little, a little too much for me. Um, but anyway, that's just my, you know, that, that's just me. But uh, anyway, it's still really enjoying the series. It's so action-packed. Uh, again, Sarah J Maas is just like an awesome storyteller. Uh, if you are into fantasy uh, action, Game of Thrones, it's very Game of Thrones if that's your thing. Um, and witches and fae and oh yeah, it's just, it's so good um, and magic. So yeah, really, really enjoying that. Um, yeah, so I think that is it, uh, as I mentioned. I think I have a kitty. What's going on with you, Bella? What's new? What's new? You want to get in my arm? She's purposefully making herself really heavy in my arms. I don't know if you guys have cats that do that, but whenever she doesn't want to be held, she just makes herself really bottom heavy. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, you want to go down? All right. Bye. Thanks for saying hello. But anyway, thank you so much again for hanging out with me today. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode and haven't yet, please like and subscribe below. Uh, I put out a video again every Friday. And yeah, I look forward to chatting with you uh, next week. And remember, the AMA, uh, the AMA episode next week. Leave a question below and I will do my best to answer all your queries uh, in the next bonus episode. Uh, and that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.